Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. You know, they're still talking about that um, seizing Area 51. Yeah. Charging the, the facility and, right. and trying to get in. Yeah, we did a show about that. We did. Not and, a good idea, we figured. And, and don't do it, is yeah. what we said. Yeah. Well, uh, along those same lines, I found a story here, some fascinating facts that you may or may not know about Area 51. There may be aliens living amongst us, Ronnie. We'll find out on this next episode of Men Are So Smart. Admit it, folks. When you hear the name Area 51, you immediately start thinking about aliens, UFOs, conspiracy theories, and the like. But that's all just a myth, right? Yeah. Or is it? Maybe. Here are some fascinating facts about Area 51. So the name itself comes from a map. Uh, the name Area 51 came from designations on maps from the 1950s. Area 51 is part of the National, I'm sorry, Nevada National Security Site, formerly known as the Nevada Test Site. The Nevada National Security Site is a remote area of desert 65 miles north of Las Vegas. Uh, area 51 has also been referred to as Groom Lake. Uh, that's the name of the lake the test site was built around. Paradise Ranch, uh, lead engineer of the U2 project gave it its nickname in order to entice workers to come. Good thinking. And Watertown, the official name of the test site given in 1956, and Dreamland after an Edgar Allan Poe poem of the same name. Hmm. I understand that Area 51 is now viewable, visible. On Google, Ronnie. On um, yeah, on Google Earth or uh, Google Maps, yeah. Until recently, uh, it was censored. Yep. Hmm. Yep. Coincidence? You be the judge. Visitors are not allowed at Area 51. No. It's a restricted area. In fact, armed guards, known as camo dudes, patrol the perimeter. The site is under 24-hour surveillance, but. You can drive up to the front and back gates, just don't trespass. Yeah. You could end up paying up to a thousand dollar fine, spending six months in prison, or both. Here's uh, some noteworthy facts. Author and U2 historian Chris Pocock, and aerospace historian and author Peter Merlin, who's been researching Area 51 for more than 30 years, told Popular Mechanics that they're both They've both been closely watched or even intimidated by guards when trying to get a peek into Area 51. Some of the guards have experienced respiratory problems due to exposure to toxic chemicals at the site, Ronnie. Mm. What kind? Very odd. On Earth-like chemicals? Yeah, could be. Um, the existence of Area 51 was formerly... I'm sorry... Yeah, formally acknowledged in 2013. Uh, in 2013, CIA approved the release of declassified documents detailing the history of its spy plane development, namely the U-2 and the Oxcart programs. Uh, the release of these documents marked the first time the government formally acknowledged the existence of the test site. They had to. They were feeling the pressure. Uh, I, you know what? I think everybody knew before then even. It was there, but they, maybe they weren't. Uh, but now they're releasing documents. Some are probably pretty well redacted of information. I'd but, have to think so. But still, some of it's out there. Uh, so here's a fun fact. The okay. documents were released in response to a Freedom of Information Act uh, that was submitted eight years earlier by American intelligence historian Jeffrey Reichelson of the George Washington University National Security Archive. Purpose of the Freedom of Information Act is to ensure a nation of informed citizens, which is vital to the functioning of a democratic society. Yeah, but only to the limits that the government says it'll be allowed. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to put people into a panic. No, and you don't want to put a uh, baby in a corner. No, nobody puts baby in a corner. See? <laughs> Area 51, sorry, I digress. <laughs> Area 51 
it's affiliated with the Air Force. Why, of course. In Area 51 is an active military installation administered by Edwards Air Force Base in SoCal. It is also part of the Nevada Test and Training Range. The NTTR is used by Nellis Air Force Base to conduct testing tactics development and provide advanced training supporting national interests. The NTTR also hosts a number of U.S. Air Force Weapons School exercises each year. In the past, the site has been used to test and develop new aircraft, including the famous U-2 spy plane, a high-altitude plane for use for reconnaissance operations. Fun fact. Fun fact. Ready? Yes. Fun fact. I'd like to hear it. The U-2 spy plane is still flying combat missions. Hmm. But not the SR-71. No, no. That's, that's done. Okay, next tidbit. The government has been studying UFOs there. We know them that all along. After decades of denying the existence of Area 51 or having any interest in aliens, the government finally admitted to studying UFOs. Um, the Pentagon confirmed it had funded a $22 million project, uh, a research program called the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program. So it's the AV tip, I guess. <laughs> the, the program lasted from 2007 to 2012. But according to the History Channel, this was not the first UFO study done by the government. Uh, official studies began in the 40s with Project Sign providing some of the most credible videos of aerial phenomenon to date. Uh, the project, which the United States Air Force UFO Investigation Program, was redesigned as Project Grunge. Uh, I'm sorry, Grudge. <laughs> <laughs> Grunge would be something else. I was thinking of Seattle. That's, That's a band, yeah. yeah. Uh, Project Grudge in 1949, and then finally Project Blue Book from 1952 to 1969. Project was terminated on December 17th, 1969, and its records were retired to the custody of the National Archives. Hmm. I'd like to get my hands on them. Boy, yeah, that would be kind of fun. Get a peek at that Blue Book, huh? I'd love that. Did you know... Employees of Area 51 fly in and out of work. Wow. Listen up. In a flying saucer? Uh, no. No. Area 51 employees must fly in and out of work via a restricted terminal at Las Vegas' McCarran Interna International Airport. They call it Janet Airlines, hmm. located in Las Vegas flies employees on one of several unmarked planes that are allowed in Area 51's airspace. No other planes are allowed. No. Fun fact, Janet Airlines recently posted a job ad seeking cabin crew on the website of private defense contractor ACOM. In addition to qualifying for top secret government security clearance, the job also required candidates to be able to deal with possible bomb threats and hijackings. Janet, you might wonder, stands for just another non-existent terminal. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Very clever. Very clever. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure part of the reason is they don't want employees smuggling somebody onto the site in the trunk of their car. Oh, or, yeah. Or, you know, something like that. Yeah. So, and putting people on an airplane... You can scan their bodies before they get on to make sure they're not carrying a, a GoPro or whatever. Wow. Uh, yep. So, Area 51 alien conspiracies gained ground in the late 1980s. Oh, I've read about this. Uh, I watched a video, and I'll, I'll get into it briefly. In 1989, a man named Robert Lazar yeah. told a Las Vegas television reporter, and this was like an investigative reporter that they had, that he had worked on extraterrestrial technology at Area 51. It was later determined that Lazar made up the whole story, including not only his employment at the military installation, but also his college background. He claimed he graduated from Caltech and MIT, which was untrue. He also claimed to have worked for the Los Alamos National Laboratory, but he made up that story as well. So I watched, uh, you know who Joe Rogan is, don't yeah, you? Sure. Okay. 
Joe Rogan has a very popular pop podcast. Oh, I watched this, Ronnie. I watched. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yes, and he okay. had Bob Lazier on there, uh, along with a guy who did a documentary. Mm -hmm. They're still claiming that Bob Lazar really did work at Los Alamos, that he really did work at Area 51, and that he worked with alien technology. I don't know. I've I've watched. Oh, God dang, that video has to be over an hour long. Yeah, I've watched it at least twice. Somebody sent it to us. Uh, my son sent it to me, and I may have sent it to you. Oh, okay. Um, the guy doesn't seem like he could lie that convincingly about this story. I don't know. Plus, there is a apparently a newspaper clipping. Uh, he used to drive a jet-powered Honda. Oh, right. It had a small jet motor on it. And because he worked at the National Propulsion, which is Los Alamos, um, he worked at that facility. He was very familiar with jet propulsion. Put a little jet engine on the back of this Honda. And he was mentioned in a newspaper article, pictured next to his car, and it says Bob Lazar, uh, an employee at Los Alamos. Well, basically, he came through, and I don't know if you know the whole story, but he kind of exposed some of the stuff that was happening at Area 51 to this investigative reporter, and all of a sudden, obviously, he got caught. Obviously, he got fired, and very obviously, they scrubbed his existence from Area 51 and any previous scientific uh, you know, exposure he may have had, like Los Alamos. See, you can trust the government. Yeah. They're, they're, they do the right thing. So, but this article is saying, oh no, that's just a, a you know, a fake. He yeah, faked that's it. because it was scrubbed. So it is scrubbed. Yep. Astronauts accidentally took a photo of Area 51 in the 70s. Uh, they ac accidentally snapped a photo back in 1974, even though they were told not to. Classified CIA memos said that making the photo public would almost certainly provide strong stimulus for media questioning and the potential near-term revelation of the missions of the installation. Wow. In the end, NASA got its way and the photo went in the Skylab collection without any public outcry. A noteworthy fact, the Soviet Union already had its own satellite images of Area 51. Oh, yep. That it's, figures. It's a matter of which country is going to get this technology first. Right. All right. And last, but certainly not least, Area 51 is still open. There's no doubt about it. Yep. Uh, it's very much in use today, but nobody really knows for sure what's going on there. Uh, a previous YouTube pilot uh, told Popular Mechanics that it's possible they're developing lasers, classified aircraft, directed energy weapons and highly sophisticated forms of radio communication. Um, the, they're guessing that they're working on advanced weapons, electronic warfare systems, unmanned aerial vehicles, and improved stealth, stealth technology. Uh, whatever it is they're working on, people are always going to be curious at the most basic level anytime you have something secret or forbidden. That's kind of true. Human nature is going to tell people, I need to find out what it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, it comes right back to that. Do you believe in aliens? Do you believe we're the only intelligent life form? Do you believe we actually are an intelligent life form, for that matter? Um, you know, I go back and forth on this, and, and I just, again, I, I, I say, and I think I said in the last episode, um, that people... If, it, if they're given the information they want, you know, they might regret it. Right. You might not want to know. Yep. Um, and some say that this technology that they're working at in Area 51 is so advanced that they're waiting for the rest of society to catch up to a point where they would be ready for this new information. To release it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you've got to believe. I mean, I just told you that uh, astronauts took pictures back in 1974. That was, uh, what was that, 45 years ago? 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. 45 years ago, and they, it's still there today. Yeah. And if it didn't have a respectable study going on, it would have been it would have been stopped already. Yep. They would have said, like, you know what? There's too many people that want to know about this. We're going to shut it down. But they haven't. Why? What goes on there that they don't want us to know about? Well, is it possible? And I I do. I think that there are other life forms out there. Though the the galaxy, not just our galaxy, but the whole solar system, is so immense that to think that we are the only intelligent beings in the whole solar system is far-fetched and is it possible and you know I I think it's possible that the way we travel through space is pretty archaic it's like taking your Model T you know to Reno right on the freeway <laughs> yeah uh, it's not gonna make it I mean or if it is it's gonna take forever mm -hmm. whereas other civilizations may be way more advanced and is it possible that you know humans were put on this planet as kind of an ant farm where now they're watching and watching us develop and oh how interesting look what the humans have developed That's and, stupid humans yeah so um, and you know it everything that's invented certainly affects everything else that's you know invented if nobody had invented a gasoline engine mm -hmm we would have some other form of transportation. Somebody would have found an alternative because that's what people do. People uh, are, you know, they, they create things. So maybe our technology that we already have is limited what we're capable of and somebody needs to start with a blank piece of paper and, you know, kind of from scratch almost. There you have more information on the mysterious Area 51. Ooh, spooky. If either one of us disappear in the next week or so, you'll know what happened. We've given out too much information. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't be the first time. Uh, <laughs> I'm just not looking forward to the probe, honestly, Rob. Oh, dang. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Uh, but if, yeah. Uh, you know, that's what it takes. Emphasis on but. But. Uh, but first. <laughs> All right, that'll wrap up today's episode of Men Are So Smart. We hope you enjoyed you're welcome to leave comments below. Ronnie and I are very good about getting back to you yep. each time you leave one. Uh, and like we've said before, sometimes at the moment that it comes in, maybe we're, we're both for hands are tied. And uh, you we, know what we I might would, just like it. You know what I would really like is if somebody else would watch the Joe Rogan interview with Bob Lazar and see what you think about it. The guy looks like he's being very forthcoming. Uh, I've seen a lot of people lie. He doesn't look like he's lying to me. So, but watch it for yourself and you be the decide judge. for yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. See you on the next Men Are So Smart. Do -do 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 -do